Hi and welcome, we are Marta and Alberto. In our today's show, we will explore the secrets of one of the most exotic dances of the entire world, the salsa. We would love you to join us in this little trip to the depths of this folkloric expression. For those who may not have heard about it, Salsa is just a name to group a set of playful musics and dances built on top of shared rhythm. This rhythm consists of eight times where the fourth and the eighth are silent. Although it is a heterogeneous movement, all subsets have the same foundations, son and casino, which are two perspectives of the same picture, two faces of the same coin. Born in Cuba at the beginning of the 20th century, salsa is a fusion between the Spanish and African music. Later, it filtered down to all the Caribbean Sea, finally reaching South and North America. On the other hand, casino comes from the dance done in the Casino Deportivo de La Habana in the early 50s, and it descends directly from the traditional dancing. It must have been a great period. Even though the Cuban music is the dorsal spine of salsa, salsa won't have reached its actual status without the truly outstanding effort of the Puerto Rican musicians. They drew from Cuba the structural rhythms and modernized it, giving it its current sound. What in first place looked like other dance rapidly becomes a magic circle of human soul spinning in an unstoppable vortex of passion. What is most interesting about salsa is its erotic content, which doesn't lean on explicit contact but in sensuality and suggestion. Among all the different styles of dancing, we want to emphasize the wheel style, standing in a circle all the couples dance according to the steps that the boss of the wheel sings. This style is one of the richest, as it combines the typical steps with others in which the couples change between them. Nowadays, this genre has earned a huge popularity in the whole world. In Madrid, it's danced in several clubs like Azuca or La Negra Tomasa, and cultural spaces like La Enredadera, La Ingobernable, or La Tabacalera. At this point, we have debated which is its music, dance, and roots. But what makes it different from other dances or rhythms? From my point of view, It's its simplicity what makes it unique. That's the real secret. Some people will do movements pretty elaborated, complex figures, and they will see how its essence escapes between their fingers. On the contrary, those approaching it without expectations, just trying to have fun, will feel the true essence of this astonishing culture. Either you want to have fun, build self-confidence, or just let your head down, salsa is your dance. Hi everybody. Hi everybody, we are Alberto and Marta. And today we are going to do an interview to our salsa instructor, Mr. McKinnon. And he's going to share with us his experience with salsa. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so hi Anne, we wanted to thank you for giving us this interview. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, first of all, we would like to know a little bit about yourself and your relationship with salsa. Okay. So, what can you tell us? Okay, well, I went to my first salsa class by accident. I was uh, trying to go to a different event, and there, the first person that I met invited me to come to a salsa class with him. And I never thought that it would end up being an important part of my life, but uh, from the very first day, I realized it was something that I wanted to learn how to do. Okay, and where did you take your first class? My first class was in La Tabacalera, which is a social center here in, in the center of Madrid, in Embajadores. And were you scared? Were you, how was your, your experience? Well, it was, a, it was a difficult first class because the teacher was very aggressive and very confrontational. But I decided that even with his attitude like that, it, it just made me want to learn even more how to be a, a, a good dancer in Sasa. And can you explain a little bit how is a, a salsa class or 
for the salsa rueda okay. the style that we do. So the, the style of, of salsa is called rueda and it comes from Cuba and rather than dancing uh, just with a partner or just by yourself every everyone dances with a partner but also in a circle of other partners and the idea is that all of the all of the dancers do the same move at the same time. One of the people in the rueda calls a move and all of the people start to, to do this same, uh, the same part of the dance at the same time. Okay, that's nice, that's nice. And since salsa has so many different approaches like social dancing or exhibitions, which are your aims in salsa? Is it a tool to achieve something or is it an end in itself? I think it's it's both. For me, the salsa groups have always been very important as a social place because it was one of my first introductions into uh, a social environment in Spain. It's the reason that I've met a lot of my friends and it's still very important to me in a social context. So the first thing that I aim to provide in a, a salsa class before teaching anybody how to dance is to provide uh, a welcoming space and somewhere where people will make friends and get to know other people. And the last question I wanted to ask you is that I've been in several of your classes and I've noticed that you make an effort not to distinguish between sexes when referring to both dancing roles. Mm -hmm. So which parts of the feminist movement do you consider might be healthy to include in salsa? Well. Uh, as I said, a, an important aspect of the classes for me is that they're welcoming for everybody. And I would go so far as to say that in the, in the types of dance that I teach, I don't see any reason to distinguish between gender for the, the, the roles of leading or following that someone could choose. So, thank you, Ian. You're welcome. Now, my partner is going to do your... some questions. Okay. So, uh, hi Ian, thank you for this interview. You're welcome. Uh, now, I'd be very interested to hear your views on some salsa uh, style issues. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, ways to dance salsa, like Cuban or LA. Among all of them, which one do you reckon as the most genuine? The most genuine? Well, I think, uh, as, as we, we mentioned earlier, that even some of the most famous salsa musicians deny salsa as a style at all, so I don't think it's really fair to compare one type of salsa with being more genuine than another. Um, but that said, I think it is, it's very enjoyable to learn different types of salsa and to be open-minded about them. If you have to choose a favorite step in salsa, which would it be? You know, when I started learning salsa, I was really keen to learn some of the more complicated figures that you can learn to dance. And every week I wanted to learn more and more complicated things. And after I had been learning for a year or so, I realized that actually what I enjoyed more is the the flow between one move and the next. And to sum up, what does salsa represent in your life? For me, salsa is a nice activity to to do after I finish my work. It's a, a way to disconnect from from the work that I do, which is typically at a desk all day. Uh, it's very different in the level of concentration that it requires, but also in that it's a very physical activity. The fact that it's a musical activity um, is, in, is very enjoyable as well. And on top of all of that, it provides a wonderful social aspect to my life. Most of my closest friends in Spain I've met through Dancing Salsa. And now I would like to ask you for some tips for beginners. Okay. And uh, a lot of people are ashamed of uh, dancing in public. They justify it by their lack of rhythm. Right. Do you think uh, they should worry about that? That this is something that can be learned? Well, I think before we even get to salsa, I think it's very important to say that anyone should feel comfortable to dance in any style they like in public. And I, I really hope that people achieve that if that's something that will make them feel more comfortable. For me, the salsa was uh, a, a very useful thing to learn because if you ask someone who's who's embarrassed about dancing in public, it provides a framework for you to dance within, which will give you more confidence that what you're doing is 
is right by someone else's standards. But I don't think that should ever be the end goal for anyone. I think we should all try and learn to be comfortable with our own standards. And just to finish, which would be your advice for someone that is starting right now? Uh, I think make sure that you're in a class with some people whose company that you enjoy, some people that you feel comfortable with, in a space that you like, and find, find a class where you like the atmosphere, and make sure that you're enjoying what you're doing even even before you start worrying about whether you're learning or not make sure that it's a comfortable environment for you and and if it is then start looking at other classes as well i i learned a lot by going to several different sasa classes when i was starting okay thank you to conclude i would really like to thank you for sharing your wisdom and your time with us uh, we deeply appreciate it oh you're welcome thanks and thank you very you much again, around. yeah we'll see you on the dance floor We encourage you to join us dancing, socializing and sharing this culture. Hope you enjoyed this video and remember, dance to the moon and reach for the stars.